in order for images from various vendors, Cisco, Palo Alto, etc., in order for them to work inside of EVNG, we need to import those images to EVNG. So in this video, I'd like to share with you the resources regarding the walkthroughs of how to do that and also reinforce in my lab environment that I've taken those steps. So let's start off at evng.net regarding the instructions for importing or integrating an image from a vendor into the emulator of evng. And it would go something like this. If we go to documentation, so I'm at eve-ng.net, and if we go to documentation, and let me make this a little bit bigger. And over on the left, we have the how-to section right above Knox Hutchinson's videos, which are all quite amazing as well, by the way. So if we click on how-to's, and then these are sorted alphabetically. So they've got a whole bunch of vendors here, including Cisco and F5. And here's Palo Alto. So Palo Alto, this first one would represent how to do the integration for the firewall. And the second one would be for integrating Panorama. So right now we want to integrate the firewall. So we'll click on Palo Alto. And oftentimes this is one of these showstoppers for a lot of people. They'll look at the image name and they'll think, oh, 7.01, oh, 8.01. I, I want... I want 10.x, you know, what do I do about that? And what I've discovered consistently, pretty consistently, is that if we have a newer version, the steps still work. Just simply modify the actual folder structure to represent the version of software that you're using. So this is also showing us two examples based on two different source images. The OVA is part of the open virtualization format that VMware uses, and a different flavor is the QCOW2. So it doesn't really matter which image you start with, because there's a process for integrating either one of them into EVNG. Now, ideally, the place to get these from would be logging on if you had an account at Palo Alto and log in and get the official software from the official site. Because if you're using Tor or BitTorrent or something else, there's always the possibility that you get a little more than what you asked for, meaning some malware or viruses or something like that. So whenever you're going to download software, when possible, do it from the official source. And keep yourself and your computer free from contamination. All right, so this is also showing the number of virtual CPUs and the amount of RAM and also the console option for them. And so we can tweak those as well as we go down through. So as we scroll down, here is method one, meaning we have the OVA. They want us to get a command line interface over to our virtual machine that's running EVNG. So I happen to use uh, Secure CRT. I have a license for that, but you can use PuTTY or you know anything else that supports SSH. And I'm just going to connect over to dot one fifteen, which is the IP address for my Eve NG virtual machine. And my terminal emulator software here, Secure CRT, automatically log me in. Now, another way of getting to the command line interface would be through the hypervisor. So here in the hypervisor, which is the ESXi host, if we go to navigator and click on the Eve NG Pro, you just click right here and press enter. That's yet another way to log in. And depending on how you have it configured, you could also right click here in your hypervisor, hover over console. And then if you have the VMware remote console, you could launch that as well. And here that is coming up. So it doesn't really matter, you know, too much how you get there, but you do need a CLI so you can do the initial inclusion of the image from the vendor into your EVNG environment. All right. I don't need all those windows open. So I'm going to close a few and minimize that. And here's the basic steps. So they're just having us create a temporary folder. We're going to change directories into that folder, and then we're going to extract the image. So this is the method used for the OVA. This also implies that you copied that image over to the EVNG environment using FileZilla or WinSCP or some other kind of file transfer protocol. So once again, it's making the directory, changing to that directory, and then extracting the .OVA to that directory. So once you've done the extraction, you can then use the command ls to see the contents of that folder, and then the next command would be this bad boy right there. Except we'd want to swap out this part right here, the PAVM ESXi set blah, 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 with whatever the name is for the VMDK file that you just extracted. And the result is going to be this file right here, VIRTIOA.QCOW2. The next step is to create a folder, a new folder, under this location, opt, unit lab, add-ons, kimu, and then Palo Alto dash. So in my case, I'm running 10.0.0. .0 .0. That's the image I have. And so I do Palo Alto dash 10.0.0, press enter. That makes that new folder. And then I would move, which is effectively a copy. We're copying this file here that we just created over to that folder. So now we have this folder, opt, unit lab, add-ons, kimu, and then the actual folder name that we created. In my case, it would be 10.0.0. And inside that folder, we'd have this single file. 
And then the last step, we're going to move up one folder. That's what CD space period period does. We're going to remove our temporary folder. Then this is the one I forget all the time. We're going to do a slash opt unit lab wrappers and then slash UNL underscore wrapper space dash a space fix permissions. And that's an important step to take if we want it to work. And one of the benefits I like of the uh, secure CRT package is it has its own built in file transfer. I think they call it secure FX. So currently I'm connected to my EVNG virtual machine. And if I wanted to do file transfer back and forth, I could use FileZilla or WinSCP or some third party product, but this has secure FX built right in. So this is going to launch effectively a copy utility to this host that I'm currently connected to. So I'll click launch secure FX. On the left hand side, I have files for my local computer. And on the right is the file system that's running on the EVNG virtual machine. So if we follow the instructions, we'd go to under root, we'd go to opt and then unit lab. So there's the path right there, opt unit lab, and then add-ons and then Kimu. So that's the parent folder. And then we create a folder that's going to represent the folder that's going to contain that QCOW2 image that we just prepared a few steps ago. So in my case, it's in a folder called Palo Alto-10.0.0. There's my file, vartioa.qcow2. And if I hadn't done so already, I would go to the command line, the CLI for the EVNG machine, and I would run the fix permissions command. And as you can see from right here, it's a very similar process for a lot of other vendors as well. So there's Identity Services Engine, there's some Cisco routers, there's the control platform for Cisco's Viptela SD-WAN solution. Uh, here's a folder for a wireless controller. <laughs> here's a, a folder for Windows 10, for Windows Server 2016, for Windows Server 2019. And so the key is you don't need to add like every possible option all the time. However, as you're working on a specific lab, you'd want to focus on just adding at that time that vendor's image. So here we have Palo Alto 10.0.0 ready to go. And the next question I'd like to answer is, well, if we're running this, these Palo Alto firewalls inside of this virtual machine, this EVNG, how do we interact with the live physical network and the real internet? And that's the question I'd like to answer in the next video as we incorporate routing to the real internet as part of our lab environment. So we'll do that in the very next video, and I'll see you there, my friend, in just a moment. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.